What's up, physics nerds? Now we're on to the free response section of our 2016 physics regions. And starting with part B2, I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks about the free response section. And if you start to take a look for the first question, 51 to 52, there are questions with two numbers attached to it. That means they are worth two points right here. 51 to 52 worth two points. This means you have to show your work. And the thing about these questions is that the only way you're going to solve this is by using the equation in the reference table. Whereas if you see single or questions like 53 worth only one point, that means you don't have to show work, you can just state the answer, and you don't have to solve those questions by means of an equation on the reference table. These mandate an equation from the reference tables, these do not. That means you can solve it any way you can, it doesn't have to be an equation from the reference table, it could be just some other way. Anyway, let's just start with this first set. 51 to 52. Here we have, we're calculating for the magnitude of the net force acting on the box. So the only way we could calculate for that is looking for an equation that has net force. And that's F net equals mass times acceleration. So you have to start with your equation. Next, you're going to solve, plug in what you need. F net is equal to, so first we need to identify our mass. They gave it to you right here, 2.5 kilograms. And our acceleration, they gave us, accelerating the box to the right, at 2 meters per second squared. The thing about this is that you must show units. Without the units, then you won't get credit. So something like this, empty equation, and then the equation substituted with the values and units, That'll give you the one point for 51. Now, 50, the point for 52 comes from the correct answer. So, multiplying 2.5 times 2 will get you 5 newtons. And that's the point for 52. You can still get one out of two points if, let's say, you mess up somewhere and you can still get credit for the other. You can mess up in the work for 51, but you still end it up with 5 newtons, then you'll get the point for 52. <coughs> Alright, now question 53, determine the magnitude of the force of friction on the box. So this means we cannot solve for friction by using the equation because we don't know the some of the variables needed to solve for friction. But we do know for this box right here, we have a force applied going to the right 15 newtons. And since there's an acceleration, that means we have a force to the left of friction. And we need to figure out that value. Our net force now tells us that the difference between 15 and this side is 5 newtons. If it's going to the right this way, that means this side is bigger than that. So we're going to get that F net is equal to force minus the force of friction. So 5 is equal to 15 minus force of friction. You'll get the force of friction is equal to 10 newtons. And that's all you need to state. In the answer booklet, you're going to see something like this. So they already gave you the unit. All you need to do is just put in that 10, and you'll get the credit. That's it. That's all you need to do. All right. Now, moving on to 54 to 55. Here we have this diagram. Oh look, it's related to light and refraction. We need to calculate the absolute index of refraction of the mineral. So we don't know what's that for the mineral. And we see that the light ray is starting in the mineral and going into water. So let's label the mineral as N1. N2 you have to look up on the reference table for water. And that's 1.33. Now, theta 1 and theta 2. So that means we're going to have to use Snell's law of refraction, this equation. This is the only equation you'll use for calculating anything related to refraction. Okay. Theta 1 it corresponds to the mineral, and do we take 63 or 27? Hint, you always look at the normal line. That's the angle you take it with, so it's 27. Likewise, you're going to do the same for water, so it's whatever is next to the normal line, that's 41. So we're going to plug this in. N1 sine 
27 degrees equals N2, 1.33 times sine of 41 degrees. As a note, the degree symbol for angles does count as a unit. So if you do not have those degree signs, then it's not complete. So that's one point for 54. For 55, you need to solve for N1. You'll get that N1 is equal to 1, oops, 1.92 approximately. They did not ask you to identify it, but if you try to identify it, it will be zircon. OK. So I was doing some grading for last year's regions, and 56 to 58 was a pretty tricky section, I got to say. All right, so here we have a table, and we have a ball rolling off the surface. For trial A, the ball travels with a certain speed of 2.5 meters per second. Notice that it's going horizontally. The trajectory path is going to go look like that. So that means this table looking for the height of the table, which we do not know. It's acting in the vertical direction. We also know that in the vertical direction, our initial velocity is zero. That 2.5 is just horizontal. So I'm going to indicate that as x. Remember, x and y do not interfere with each other. They only add up to make that um, vector. Okay. We also know the acceleration in the vertical direction is 9.81 meters per second squared. Why? Because of gravity. And the time they gave us is 0.391 seconds. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to solve for the distance in this direction. And we have to show an equation again from the reference table because this is a two-point question for 56 to 57. So the only equation that fits this is d is equal to vit plus one half at squared. So d is what we're solving for. So make sure you plug everything in even though vit is going to cancel out to zero. Plus one half 9.81 meters per second squared times, oops, I'm going to add this here, 0 0.391 seconds. And so you add it up. We'll multiply and add it up. 1 half times 9.81 times 0.391 seconds will get you 1, oopsies. This will get you approximately 1.92 meters for the height of the table. Now for 58, in trial B, the ball is traveling 5 meters per second. So now you have a second ball also being tossed out with twice the speed. Now, if you notice, they're going to ask you, compare the time it took the ball to reach the floor in trial B to the time it took the ball to reach the floor in trial A. So is there a difference between the two trials where in the second trial it was rolled off with twice the speed? If you guys think back to the, dem to the video I showed you where an object was dropped and another was tossed to the side, they both hit the floor at the same time. And why is that? Because they're still being held from the same height. So it's the same scenario here. They're both going to hit the floor at the same time. So all you need to do is write same time. That's all. And they'll understand that. If you write any more, you might incriminate yourself, and they're going to take points off on you. So keep it simple. Keep it short. All right. So 59 to 60, calculate the speed of the airplane. All right. So here we are, look, we are given. A radius of 8 meters, we're looking into the circular motion. And acceleration of the airplane is 25 meters per second squared. So we got this, and we got this. And we're looking for speed. How do we do that? Well, there's an equation there that involves these three variables. Because once again, we need to use an equation from the reference table for a two point question. 25 meters per second squared equals v squared over 8 meters. So 25 times 8 happens to be 200. The square root of 200 is a little over 14. So v is equal to about, let's say, 14.1 meters per second. So that's about it. Okay. <clears throat> 
number 61. State the direction of the velocity of the airplane at the instant the acceleration of the airplane is southward. So this is what you need to know. Acceleration and force are towards the center because there's centripetal force, centripetal acceleration, whereas the velocity is tangent. So we need to s see where the acceleration of the airplane is southward. That means it's southward pointing towards the center. And that's right up here, this position. So at this position, the acceleration is pointed towards the center, towards the south. That means the acceleration, I mean, the velocity is tangent to this. That means while it's moving in this direction, the velocity is this way. In terms of compass direction, we need to say this, eastward. So our answer here is eastward. So I'm going to write this answer over here. And that's all you need to say, eastward or to the right, ideally eastward. Okay, last set of questions for part B2. So here we have a graph representing the speed of a marble rolling down the straight incline as a function of time. 62 is asking what quantity is represented by the slope of the graph. So here we have speed versus time. So y equals speed on our graph and x is equal to time. Slope is equal to change in y over change in x. So our change in velocity over change in time. Guess what? That's equal to acceleration. That's something you also kind of need to know as well. But you could solve it through this method, knowing what slope formula is. So our answer is just acceleration. That's all you need to state. 63 to 64. This is a reference table equation. Calculate the distance the marble travels during the first three seconds. Okay. So you can do it one of two ways. You can use it by calculating the, the area under the curve. So this is a valid equation, one half base times height. So our base here is, oops, three seconds, and our height is four meters per second. One half times 12 is six um, meters, which equals the distance. This is another way you could solve it. Well, actually, the only other way you could solve it is that you had to solve for the acceleration yourself, but this is the quickest way to solve it by finding the area under the curve. Anyway, and that's all you need to show. All right, and then 65. Determine the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of planet X. All right, acceleration due to gravity. So if you notice here on our y-axis, we have the weight which is f of g, and then on the x we have the mass, which is m, f g equals m times g, you don't have to show work here, but g, you just take your y divided by x, you find the slope, you can find two points, or just take one point here, so it means it's just a straight line, so let's take this one right here, as an example, And you'll get 6 newtons equals 2 kilograms. G is equal to 3 meters per second squared. And that's all you need to show. That's all you need to write, 3 meters per second squared. And that's the end of part B2. Look out for part C in the next few moments.